Hi, I'm Beth from Sew Country, and today's tutorial is for the first pattern I've ever sewn on my channel from Sew Empty Handed. This is the Super Gaming Sling. I just recently found Sew Empty Handed and this pattern. As soon as I saw it, I thought, okay, can I do this? It looks really challenging. It looks like a lot of steps. But honestly, I was so surprised at how quick it does come together. I'm not going to lie to you. It does take some steps. There are several steps you're going to go through by making this bag, but they're not hard. It's not as I would have thought it would be, like an all-day bag or an all-day project. I do suggest, like I did, is I cut it out the day before and then I sew it the next day. Not that you can't do it the same day. It just makes it more fun to me. So as you can see, we have a zipper in the front. We have a zipper here and a zipper here. These are all complete individual compartments. So there's one compartment. Here is another one with a slip pocket. And then here is your front. Everything is finished, no binding involved. I fully expect to be binding this entire bag, but when you don't bind, you do get a much cleaner look inside. And look at how smooth these curves are because there's not that binding kind of hump. So while I prefer to bind, this bag looks so much better without it. This pattern has such a sleek look and the construction of it. Look at the skinny seams. It's not a big bulky seam. It's perfect. I love it. I'm going to go through all the pieces we'll need and then we'll go through each step one by one. This will be one of my longer videos because we will have several steps that we'll go through. But please take a chance on this pattern. Sew it up. It is so cute, so good, and it's going to be great for if you go to parks, if you go to trails, if you go on hiking just to run errands. Great for kids. It's definitely a gamer bag. I don't game, but I love it. A huge water bottle can fit in the back here. Perfect. Perfect for vacations and everything. So let's go ahead and get started at looking at all the pieces we need to sew this bag. I'm going to keep this one out just so whenever we're going through everything, I can reference some of the pieces. So we're going to have attachments for our top and the bottom to hold that strap in place. So for me, what I'm doing is I'm using this print. This print is from k and Custom Fabrics. It is a cotton canvas. All I'm doing is interfacing everything with a Royal Pixie Light. That is a medium weight interfacing. It's what I use for all of my bags. It's what I use for this bag. So you can see my bag's a little soft. You can add fleece. You could add Decaville Light. Anything you wanted if you wanted a more structured bag. I prefer slouch your bags. I feel like they're fun, more fun to sew. I feel like they're easier to throw in the washing machine if you need to. It's just what I prefer to do. Choose the structure you want. So for mine, this will be that top. This will be that bottom. We're going to go on the back of the bag. Then we're going to have this top front piece. That's going to go right here. You can see I made sure to like kind of fussy cut mine a little bit. So this is a great place if you want to add a tag or any kind of decoration, a small panel. You can see on this one I made sure to fussy cut that print as well. We are going to have a lot of gussets in this bag. You can see we have gussets here, here, down low, here, here, down low. It's a lot of gussets. I find it best the, to use measurements to use your rotary cutter and cut, but this pattern does give you pattern pieces for everything. A lot of people prefer those pattern pieces. All your gussets are going to be different size, different shapes, of course, because these are different. So we have our main zipper panel gusset. That's going to be this up here. We're going to have two exterior, two lining. All of my material is going to be the same for the interior and the exterior. It just makes it easier for me. But for my exterior main zipper panel, I'm going to have that interfaced with that Royal Pixie Light. But for the lining, I'm not interfacing at all. Yes, I am using a cotton canvas that does have a little bit more structure, not any stretch. It's a little bit firmer, but if you used cotton woven, I would probably interface all pieces. But if you're using a cotton canvas like me, just interface your two and then leave your two unlined and you would have structure, but it would still be soft like this one. So that's the top main zipper panel. 
Then we're gonna have our front pocket zipper panel. Here's our front pocket. So these two pieces right here, again, the same thing. Exterior canvas, interface with the pixie light. The lining pieces are going to be left uninterfaced, still that canvas. So that'll be these. Then we're gonna go on to our gussets at the bottom. And just so you know, she refers to these as the gussets and these as the zipper panels. I get confused sometimes and I'll call everything a gusset, but just for clarity's sake, the bottom in the pattern is referred to as the gusset, the top are the zipper panels. Here is the main gusset, this piece in the main part. So on these, we have one exterior, one lining. On these, I did choose to interface both of those with the Royal Pixie Light, the medium weight interfacing just because I wanted a little extra structure here at this part. For the front pocket gusset, we are gonna have the same pieces, just different sizes. One exterior, one lining, and again on those, I did choose to interface both of those with the medium weight interfacing just for a little bit more structure. So those are all the pieces for the gussets. We have that taken care of. Let's talk about the front pocket piece. We'll have several pieces to make up this front pocket. So we have one exterior and then we'll have two lining pieces. Because when we open this up, you can see we have a piece here and a piece inside there. So this is your two lining pieces. This is your one exterior piece. On this one I did different prints, but on the other one I chose to do them all the same just a little bit easier. I did interface the exterior with the medium weight interfacing, the cotton canvas lining. I just left them alone. You can leave those uninterfaced. If you want more structure, interface all of them. Now let's talk about this main body piece. You can see this right here. We're going to have one exterior and then when you open it up, you can see we'll have the two linings in here. So again, my exterior, I did interface. My lining pieces, I did not. The last thing we'll need to complete this bag is zipper pockets. I'm going to do the zipper pocket here on the front. I'm not doing any other pockets, mainly because I ran out of this material. I was gonna do a slip pocket on the inside. Which side do I have on here? But I didn't have any more fabric to do that, and I just decided not to, but you can make a slip pocket, just a simple slip pocket there. So that's the fabrics and materials we're going to need. Let's take a minute just to talk about some of the other pieces we're going to use. I'm going to use webbing for my strap. The pattern tells you, and these, I don't know if you can tell, but these are two definitely different colored webbings. Actually, they're pretty much the same color, just two different types of webbing. So I just didn't have enough of either one, but I wanted this color. You're gonna cut your webbing and have two different pieces that are two different measurements. So go to the pattern to do that. On this bag, you can see I actually used fabric. So you can use fabric too if you wanted to do that instead. Like I told you, I've already ran out of fabric, so I had no choice. I'm going to use three pieces of zipper tape, one for my exterior, up here the main compartment, one for the front pocket, and then one for that little pocket on the front of the bag. I'm going to be using one of these, or I think they're called a side release buckle, but I'll be using one of these. I'm also going to be using adjustable bar strap. You don't have to, but I think I'm going to use one on mine and have it just like I did on this one. You can see I have that. You get it turned around. You can see I just have it there to kind of help because I don't know how I want to wear it or if I want it to hang on the front or the back and that'll matter. So I am keeping an adjustable bar on this one as well. I have a bunch of zipper pulls because I want to have two on each one. So I want two on the top, two on the bottom, then one on the front. I didn't do that with this one. Basically on this one, I just kind of didn't have enough of those pink ones. But for the one today, I really want the two. I don't, I didn't really want the gold ones to be this long, but I don't have a lot of gold hardware. So mine will be kind of big and dangly, but that's okay. So that's the hardware you're gonna use. Everything else will just, if I, if I forgot anything, I'll think of it as we go. But that's all the pieces we need to get this pattern started. 
First thing we're going to be working on is these attachment pieces for our strap. We're going to take the smaller piece of our webbing and it's going to go with the smaller of these connectors, which is our bottom. These larger pieces will go with our larger piece of webbing. This is going to be your basic way you make a connector. You're going to put these right sides together, just like this. You are going to have your webbing, and then you'll take your webbing and it will be going up through that larger part and just up through the short part. Of course, make sure you have it centered. Have about an inch overhang. No big deal. We've done so many of these here on this channel and probably in your own sewing room. What you do is you sew the three sides. You leave this bottom completely open so that you can turn this strap right sides out, press it out, and then top stitch all around. The only thing I do sometimes to kind of help that process is after I sew, I do trim down those corners just for less bulk. But no real good tricks here. It's just basic sewing. So I'm going to go ahead and clip everything together. Once you have that large clip together, you do the exact same thing for the small. If you're worried about that webbing shifting, you could definitely baste it first. I'm just going to do it this way. I feel like it'll be okay, but just do whatever makes this so more enjoyable for you. So again, we're going to use the seam allowance given the pattern. We'll start at the bottom, back stitch, go up, pivot over, pivot down, back stitch on both of these, turn them. I'm not trimming this top webbing. I'm leaving it long. You can put a rivet there if you wanted to, but I will just top stitch after I turn it and I'll go ahead and baste this bottom close and that will complete these two pieces. So now I have those sewn and top stitch. They look great. I'm going to pull out one of my back pieces, the exterior one. This is the longer piece. Of course, your bottom is going to go here at the bottom. It's just going to be centered. Nothing super fancy about that. Just center it. You can mark your centers. You can eyeball it. You can take a ruler, however you feel comfortable doing it. I'm going to clip that in place. I'm going to do the same thing. Oh, do I want it like yeah, I want it like this whenever I'm wearing it. So I'll center that one. And that one pretty much is going to fit almost completely across that straight portion. Clip that. And if you're worried about the direction, like you can see, whenever the bag's down and you're not wearing it, it's going to look like that. But whenever you're wearing it, it'll be lifted up or if you're hanging it. So I don't really know the best way for the direction. You can look at it and see what looks best for you. I already know for a fact when I did this the last time that these straps have a tendency to get in the way. In the pattern she tells you can go ahead and add the adjusters and all that stuff right now but she said she tells you that you can wait and I suggest you do wait. I found it very tricky whenever I was putting these straps on last time to make sure they were perfect and I had them going the right way so I'm not even going to try it right now. I'm just going to wait till at the end and it'll just be easier for me. But I'm going to roll up these straps. So when I'm going through the making of this bag, they're kind of out of the way and not just flopping around everywhere and getting caught in the stitches or anything like that. I am just going to baste these two connectors in place at the top and the bottom of this piece with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. If you've watched my other videos, you know I like to get a little small, a lot of small pieces taken care of all at once. It just makes it easier for me. So starting out with this way feels great. We're going to go ahead and continue that and skip around a little bit in the pattern by working on the gussets next. I get a lot of pieces connected all at once and it just helps my mind to feel better. So I'm going to grab out my zipper tape. I have three pieces of zipper tape. The smallest piece is going to be for that front pocket. I'm not going to use it right now. So I'm going to use these two pieces. I'm not going to put my zipper pulls on yet. I'm just going to grab all of those pieces for the zipper panels. You'll have two. 
exterior and two lining for one piece, two exterior and two lining for the other piece. As you can see, in both of mine, I cut my zipper tape to be longer than these panels. That just makes it easier for me to add my pull at the end. You can do it however you want to do it. We are going to do a traditional zipper sandwich on all these gussets. The only thing I'm really going to pay attention to is kind of watching my direction. I want, let's look at the other bag, how we did it. You can see these are kind of skinny, so the direction is not going to matter too much, but I want these to be going all in the same direction, and this one I want going backwards. You don't have to do that. You can do whatever you want. It's just a little preference I want. So I'm going to be paying attention to that, but you can see it's going to be so small, it's really not going to matter too much. But let's make all of these gussets. We're going to do it all the same way. We're going to take one of our lining pieces first. For me, the lining pieces do not have an interfacing. And then I will put my zipper tape right sides up on the lining. So the lining piece will be right sides up. My zipper tape will be right sides up. I'm going to go ahead and clip these edges together, making sure that I have an even amount on both sides. Typically, I would take my time, go real slow, and baste each one of these in place. But guys, we have a lot of these to do. <laughs> so I'm just going to clip and go all through them. I'm not going to sew them all on camera just because it'll take forever. So I'll go through this first one to show you, and then I will just keep repeating the rest of them off camera. So that is how the first one looks. Lining zipper. I'm going to take one of my exterior pieces. Let's see, I want this one to go backwards because I want to be facing that way. So this is the way mine will look and I'm just going to flip it. So my exterior and my lining are right sides together. That zipper is right sides together with the exterior. Everything's sandwiched together. I'm going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern and then I will pull these two panel pieces, the two zipper panel pieces, wrong sides together in order to top stitch. So go over it one more time so you can see clearly how that looks. I will back stitch when I start and stop as always. This is how the first side of those zipper panels look. I'm going to repeat that with the other side of this longer piece, and then I'll do the same things with this shorter piece. So when I come back, I will have all my zipper panels attached to their zippers. I will go ahead and put on the zipper pulls, and I'll cut down the extra zipper tape. I also know that I want tags on this bag, so I've got to decide what tags I'm going to use and where I'm going to put them, so I'll be do deciding on that too. So let's go over the pieces I have. This is the front pocket zipper panels with the pulls attached. You can see how big they are. And I did trim up the zipper tape, same thing with that main exterior opening. I also went ahead and added a tag to the interior and then a tag to the exterior. So I got those things taken care of. We're going to continue to work with the gusset. So, and I'm going to go ahead and apologize because I know these zipper pulls are going to be hitting and clanking and being very loud. We'll start with this bigger piece first, but both of these are going to be dealt with the same way. If you notice, I did not close up these panels. Typically, when I make zipper gusses, I'm usually going to bind a bag and I close these up. But this is a birthed bag, so we're not going to. We're going to keep these separate the entire time. Grab out that longer gusset piece and go ahead and get your exterior and place it right sides together with the exterior pieces. What we're going to do is we're going to clip the short ends together like we typically would, but we're going to make sure that we keep that lining out of the way. So I'm going to pull that lining so that I don't clip it inside and just clip the exteriors together. Now I'm going to sew this 
with the lining up so I can make sure I don't catch any of the lining. I'm going to sew, let me hold this up to the camera so you can see. So I will just sew over until it gets to this lining piece. So I'll pull it and I'll sew over and stop my needle right there before I get to the lining. I'll break my stitches, so make sure you back stitch and then start and stop. Then come over, skip that zipper, pull this piece back and start sewing on this piece and back stitch when you start and stop here. This is how we're going to sew the gusset onto the zipper panels. This zipper portion will be left open. We will close that up in just a minute. But for right now, use the seam allowance given in the pattern and go ahead and stitch those two pieces together, just the exteriors. Okay, so now we have the two exterior pieces connected to this short end. The two lining pieces are free. Let's grab that lining piece and let's place the lining piece right sides together with the lining zipper panel. So the li lining gusset and the lining zipper panels, place them right sides together just like we did with the exterior, clipping, keeping that exterior out of the way. We're gonna pull that exterior back and just sew again with that same seam allowance connecting the two lining pieces. Again, on the other side, fold the exterior back. So you can see here, this is what I have. The exteriors and the lining are separate. I have an opening right there where the zipper is. I'm gonna take these gusset pieces, separate them from the zipper panels, pull them wrong sides together, and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to top stitch right where the zipper is from zipper to zipper going through all the layers. That's going to close up that opening where the zipper is. If you didn't do this step, those pulls would be able to slide right off and you would lose them. I'm going to put my needle down before that zipper starts. Go ahead and go a stitch forward, stitch back. And I'm going to do that a few times. Stitch forward, stitch back, and go across. So I get to the other side to make sure that's really secure. So just that small amount of top stitching. I'm going to do the same thing on this other side. Pulling the exterior first. Clipping those short ends together for the exterior. Sewing that same way, just with the exteriors. Then I'll do the same thing with the lining. Again, sewing just the lining, then again, top stitching over where the zipper is. I'm going to complete that to make a loop. I'll do the same thing for this smaller piece. So I'll go off camera to do all this and I'll do it the exact same way as I did the first one. And when I come back, I'll show you what all I have. So I have both of the gussets completed. They're both a loop and I did go ahead and mark the centers. So I have the only top stitching on the actual gusset pieces are right here where the zippers are. We don't top stitch from edge to edge just with that little small spot there. We are still having everything free and open because we'll be attaching them individually. I did take the time to mark the quarter marks on these two gussets. It's time to get ready to install these, but before we do, we have to go ahead and add any pockets we're going to be adding. So for me, the only pocket I'm going to be doing is a zipper pocket on the front. I am adding my zipper pocket on the wrong side. Your zipper pocket's supposed to be on this side, but I have this design right here that I do not want to cover up with the zipper pocket. So I'm choosing to do mine on the other side. I've made one of these and I don't feel like it'll cause any problems to switch it. I can't think of anything. If it causes a problem later, then I'll just have to deal with it because I want to try to have my zipper pocket on this side. Just know if you want yours on the other side, change it over. So what I did was I have one of my zipper pocket lining pieces right sides together with this front pocket piece. This is my exterior. We only have one exterior piece like this. We have two linings, but one exterior. So I clipped it according to the way the pattern tells us to do that, and I drew the box on. I'm just going to sew around that box, then I will cut this open, push this lining through, 
add the zipper, then add the other lining piece. A basic way we do the zipper pocket. So let's go ahead and get started by sewing around this box, making sure we backstitch when we start and stop. So now that I have that open cut through all layers, I'm pushing this lining through. I will have to take this over to the iron because if not, I won't get a really pretty opening here. So I'm going to take this piece and flatten everything out so I have a really nice opening so that I can add my zipper. When I come back, what I'll do is I will pull out this zipper piece and then I'm going to center it in the middle and stitch all around the box. And then I will add my other zipper pocket and that will be the completion of this front piece and we can go ahead and start adding a gusset to it. The box is all cut and ironed. I am just going to slip that zipper tape underneath. So you can see it's just laying there underneath. I don't use clips, glue, anything. I just sew it and adjust it as I'm sewing. I have the zipper tape kind of making sure that I have like an even clearance on it. Mine's a little bit longer than the pattern says and I'll trim it down at the end. When I take it over the machine, what I'll do is I'll start stitching all around that box, making sure that I keep those zipper teeth right in the middle of that opening and adjusting as I need to. I sew about an eighth of an inch away from that edge that I just ironed flat. And I'm gonna go ahead and backstitch instead of pulling my threads through just to save a little bit of time. There's the way mine looks. Again, yours would be on the other side if you followed the pattern, the way the pattern is written. Here is the way it looks from the back. I'm not gonna trim down my zipper until after I finish sewing everything. I'll take this other pocket piece. I'm just gonna place it right sides together and we're gonna sew around all four sides. We're not leaving an opening in this pocket. I'm going to flip it up and I will sew it this way, just pulling the exterior out of the way so I can see everything clearly. And I'm just gonna sew around with the seam allowance given in the pattern, making sure I backstitch when I start and stop. Okay, so my front pocket is complete. Let's really quickly find our quarter marks on this and we're going to go ahead and start attaching that gusset. I am so excited to see this turn out. I loved the first one so I really, I'm getting a little impatient. I need to slow down because I'll make a mistake if not but I just really want to see it come all together. So there's the quarter marks on that. You're going to take out your smaller gusset because of course this is the smaller front pocket. The way we're gonna do this, for me, I don't have to worry because my zipper pulls, I don't have to be careful with them. But the only thing I do wanna make for sure is I want my print going this way. So let's see, how do I want that? Yeah, I want everything to attach here. So what I'll do first is I'm gonna flip this. And I'm going to separate the exterior and lining. I'm only attaching this exterior gusset piece to the exterior front pocket. We'll keep the lining out of the way and that's the way we'll sew it too. So a little bit different than some of your other gusseted bags, but that's just because this one is not bound, it will be birthed. I'm going to clip a few pieces there along the bottom and the top, the straight edges, and then I will get the quarter marks in and then just ease the rest of the gusset in all around. I always save the curves or corners for last. Now 
Now that I've got this started, I'm going to go ahead and open this zipper. It will help me having it opened and a little bit out of the way. I'm going to take these pieces and just clip them together so I can see clearly what I'm doing. This can get a little confusing, so you want to make sure you take the time to kind of check everything and make sure you have it going the right way. So I'm making sure that my exteriors are attached all the way around to this exterior piece and that no lining and nothing's getting twisted. For my curves, I'm just going to kind of push it in there to get those raw edges to me. It does pretty good. The pattern does tell you if you have problems, you can make some small snips into your gusset to get everything to attach. I didn't feel like I needed to do that. I had a slight bit of overhang with my front pocket piece, but nothing that I felt like was really something I needed to cut into the gusset, but definitely if you wanted to, you could do that. As always, I suggest if you're struggling with curves, you have a couple of options. You can hand baste, you can use staples, or you can do what I do when I'm struggling with a gusset or curves, I glue those curves in place. Just something I've always done if I have trouble. When I sewed this the first time, I had no trouble, so I assume I'll be okay on this one again. But we'll see how it goes. This is what we have from the back. There's that zipper pocket. When we peek around, we have all of this extra gusset and everything hanging off. But we can see that everything is attached just to the exterior. Here's the lining pulled up. We're going to sew all the way around this gusset with the seam allowance given in the pattern. So let's go ahead and do that and then we'll talk about the next steps now. I'm going to lay the pocket down on the bed of the mosh machine. I'll start here at a straight spot going with that seam allowance. When I get to this curve, I'm going to pull everything flat and make sure I don't sew over any creases or puckers. And I'll kind of shift the gusset if I need to to make sure I'm sewing over a flat area. You can also use hemostats if you're having trouble keeping things in line, if they're shifting too much and you're not feeling comfortable with it. So you can see right here is a good spot if you wanted to snip or use your hemostats. I'm just going to get out my hemostats. I will just clip them here in this corner. Just barely. I don't want to get in the seam allowance because I want to be able to sew with those hemostats still in place. Just pulling a little bit there and going slow pulling this gusset flat so I can get a straight stitch and not go over any of those puckers. When I get past the strongest part of the curve, I can take out the hemostats and continue sewing around. I'm gonna go ahead and put them back in here for this other piece to pull it down a little bit more. And there, I was through that curve. If I need to do that on the other curves, I'll do the same thing. And this curve is perfectly fine. It's holding really well, so I don't need to use the hemostats on this one. Just sometimes it could be the way I clipped it. I didn't have it clipped exactly evenly, but it'll look fine in the end. So that first part is done. Let's go ahead and flip out that exterior. We just want to get a good visual on this and see how it's looking before we trim down anything, before we move on to our next step. Oh my gosh. Let's just pull up. Does that not look amazing or what? I'm seriously dying on how beautiful it is. I love it. I love the gold. I know a lot of people don't like gold, but I am so happy I used it. Okay, whoops. Throwing clips around, sorry. So this is what we have so far. You can see that the exterior is attached to that gusset and zipper panel all the way around. This is the lining gusset still unattached to anything. We're going to attach the lining pocket piece to this side of the zipper, the side we've already sewn on. but. We're only attaching to the lining, not the exterior, so this time we'll keep the exterior out of the way. But this will be a little confusing. 
So follow this lining piece and you'll see you'll be attaching it to the bottom of this gusset, not your exterior gusset. What I do lots of times is I go ahead and zip it back up again to make sure I understand how where I'm attaching everything and just to kind of get my, my mind back around and everything. So go ahead and put it just like this and it'll kind of help a little bit for you to see that down here on the lining, your lining piece will be right sides together with it. So let's go ahead and make those center marks. And I'm just gonna clip on this lining piece and let's slowly go so you make sure you understand how this is going to attach to this other piece. I know it's a crazy kind of design, but it's so good. We're not leaving any openings. We're getting everything attached and it's gonna look great. So come up here, first part, separate these two pieces. Here is your exterior, here is your lining. Clip to the lining first. I'm gonna add a few clips right there along that straight edge just to keep everything in line. Only the lining, not the exterior. I'm gonna pull it all the way down. Here is that lining gusset. It's gonna come right here to it. Let's go ahead and clip up those marks. Get a couple of clips there. I'm gonna take these quarter marks and clip them in place. And I'm gonna show you what this looks like and kind of point everything out again in case you're getting a little confused as to what everything looks like. Come over here to this other side, still working with that same lining gusset. Now at this point, I can go ahead and unzip it. Let's look at what we got. Exterior gusset there, lining gusset here. We still have an opening here, so we're gonna sew all the way around. We don't need to worry about leaving anything open because we don't have to at this point. We are gonna go ahead and unzip this now so that we can just sew and clip around easier. It's not to turn it, it is just to sew it. And if you find it easier to sew this with your zipper closed, do that. I just find it easier to do it this way. Okay, so let's look at what we have here. We can see it's completely opened up. Here's the part we've already sewn with the exterior. Here's the lining. Let's look at it from where the zipper is. That zipper is right inside there. So it goes all to the zipper and then whenever we get to that bottom gusset piece, that's where it's separated. It works out perfectly. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna sew it the exact same way we sewed the exterior. This part's gonna be against the bed of our machine. We're gonna sew with the same lines given. We'll use the hemostats or a stiletto, whatever you use if you need to around these corners. If you want, you can see where this is kind of spreading. The designer says you can make snips right here so that this gusset spreads out a little bit better so that you don't have this puckering here. I just tend to pull and make it work, but I'll show you what it would look like if you do a snip or two. It'll just immediately kind of relax. See that pulling there? If I make a snip or two, you can see that it kind of spreads out a little bit easier. And I don't want my snips to be anywhere in that seam allowance, so it has to be smaller snips than the seam allowance. That's a tongue twister to say. Okay, let's back stitch where we start and stop and go all the way around one more time. So this is what we have. Let's go ahead and flip. Oh my gosh, look at that. 
We're just going to look at everything. I'm going to tuck it all in. And you're just going to push this all together. Just as you normally would. Oh my gosh. Look at how beautifully that is coming together. I'm so in love with it already. It looks so good. you just going to flatten that out. Sorry, I know those zipper pulls are going to be clanging around <laughs> this entire time. So sorry. Look at that. Does it look great? Okay, let's continue on. I'm determined to get this bag finished tonight. Even though we have a lot of steps left still, I want to get it done. So now we're getting very close to having this front pocket piece done. So we have one of our pocket lining pieces left and we also have this top front piece. So we're going to attach this next. So this front top panel piece is going to go right sides together with this exterior gusset, the part that doesn't have anything attached to it. So I'm going to clip the centers of both of these. I'll push that lining out of the way. I don't need to involve it at the moment and go ahead and start clipping around this straight line here. I'm going to sew this to the exterior only. You can just push that lining down with the seam allowance given in the pattern. So for me, I'm just going to smush everything around. However you want to sew it is fine. It's not really too big of a deal. If, if you have a preference on that, but I'm just going to push the lining down and just sew it right across like this. It's a straight edge, so it's not a very hard sew. Back stitch, of course. Go ahead and flip your lining up. Take this last pocket piece and we're going to place it right sides together. What we're going to do now, though, is we're going to sew this piece to the exterior and the lining. So instead, where we've been sewing them separately, we get to clip everything together and just do this last step. And then this will make the completed front exterior. So we'll have a front exterior and a back exterior getting started. We just have to fix up the lining pieces and then everything's done. I know it seems like a lot of work, but look at how it comes together, and it is so cute. So taking it like this, I'm going to clip these top pieces first. I'll come and clip these bottom pieces, like I said, together. So exteriors and linings are together. Go over to those quarter marks on both sides. Here comes those clanky zipper pulls. So sorry. And I'm going to continue clipping everything all around. The first time I sewed this, I was so nervous that it would just look horrible and that I'd mess it up. And I couldn't believe when I was done how, like, amazing it looked. Like, this pattern is a very well-written pattern. It comes together, like, such a cool way, I feel like. It's a fun sew. Sometimes you just want to like try something a little unique to be a little challenged and this is the perfect thing. So let's look at what we got. This is the back lining piece. Here is this front. We had that flap still pushed down. We're going to sew this in a little bit of a unique way. From this top curve over to this next top curve. So basically from the zipper gusset to the zipper gusset, we're going to use one seam allowance. The pattern tells us it's the regular seam allowance we've been using the entire time. But when we go around the rest of this, we're just going to be using pretty much a basting seam allowance to just kind of tack everything together for when we attach it to the rest of the parts. So make sure you note the seam allowances so you get that part right. I'm going to put this down like this, having this wrong side of the lining against the bed of my machine. Smash everything out. It doesn't matter if you smash it off. We can unsmash it later and start stitching all around these raw edges. So here I am getting ready to come up that top. This is when I go to that bigger seam allowance, the normal seam allowance I've been sewing with. Okay, 
Okay, I know I did so over a small pucker right there, but it's not bad enough to where I feel uncomfortable with it. But we have this ready to go. So this pretty much is considered our exterior now. So, I hate to tell you this, but we're gonna keep doing that all over again. <laughs> so what we have now is we have that exterior main compartment gusset. We have a lining piece. We have a back piece and I have one other lining piece here and then the front. So now it's looking like more like a traditional bag. We have a front back exterior, front back lining and a gusset. We are going to go through those entire, all those steps all over again. So at this point you could be like, okay, I'm gonna just go ahead and bond everything, but I'm not going to. Even though I love bonding, I really liked how smooth the seams fit whenever I put this bag together. So I'm not changing any of her plans, her directions, her pattern. I really like it. So I'm going to go ahead and go through everything once again. We're going to start with this exterior piece. We're going to take this gusset. Let me make sure I know. Yeah, I want this to be this way, so I'm going to flip it just to make sure, because where my print's a little directional, I wanna make sure I have it the right way. If your print's not directional, you don't have to be careful at all about that. And we're gonna do the same thing where we attach the exterior to the exterior, the lining to the lining, all of those steps. It is a little bit of a tedious process, but I really, really think that finished bag is worth it. And this is coming from someone who loves bonding, so you know I mean it. You know that I mean it. Let's go ahead and clip some of these long parts here first. I am not going to do all of these steps on camera. I'm going to show you the start of this and then I will just do the rest of it off camera. But I do want to show you how we get it started in the initial parts on the camera and how those first steps look just as a reminder, even though, just so you can see the difference between the two and so you know how it looks. And so I have it clipped around. Let's look at what we got here. This is the lining. Remember, it's out of the way because we're just working with the exterior. Here is the exterior for the zipper panel. I have that lining flipped down. Exterior goes all the way around, attached. I'm going to sew it all the way around, just like I did the last one. Then I'll come back and attach the lining the same way I did before. It'll attach to this piece, and it'll attach to this piece. Then I'll put the back on too. I'll come back and show you the next step from whenever it changes, but for this part, I'm gonna go ahead and sew the exterior together, and I'll sew one of the lining pieces together, and then we'll come back and work on the two back pieces. So we are so very close to be done. You can see what we have here, exactly what we had earlier. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this out so that we have everything ready for that last set of pockets. Now on this one, I wanna make sure I leave an opening in the lining and an opening in the zipper. I will have to turn this one this way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make sure we're working with everything with this raw edge here so let's go ahead and flip. And this will have to kind of be bunched on in there. Push that all down. Take that exterior piece and you will clip it to the top just like you did with the other one with the gusset exterior. So we're gonna clip that around. Then we'll do the same thing with the lining. And so that way we can leave an opening and berth through that lining pocket and then we will come back and close the pocket up. Last thing we'll have to do is fix out that strap. Honestly, to me, figuring out that strap is like one of the hardest parts. I'm not good with hardware. 
I did not mark my quarter marks on this and I know that's going to give me grief. Um, I should have done that. So just forgot to and sort of clipping and didn't think about it. I could take it off and go back, but I think I can manage it. I might just have to pull the clips apart a time or two to kind of adjust things. Make sure when you're sewing around this that you're not getting any of those other parts inside kind of caught in the sewing. I kind of use my finger to feel to make sure I'm not sewing over anything I shouldn't be because it can get a little tricky there where there are a couple of things smushed inside. Okay, so this is how my exterior looks. You can see it's all clipped in there. After I sew that, then what I'll do is I will come and attach the lining to that last free edge all the way around. So that'll be all tucked in there, leaving that opening. And then I will also leave an opening here in this side of the lining so I can turn through there. So I'm just gonna sew all around with the seam allowance given on this exterior portion. Then I will come back and I will sew the lining as well. And you can see it will attach here at the top and go all the way around, but I will leave an opening so that I can turn it easily and be able to stitch up that opening close so the bag will be completely finished on the inside. I wanted to come back real quick and just show what I have here. So here is what I just sewed that back exterior on. And you can see everything, this lining piece is completely unattached. So to attach the rest of that lining, I have to smush all of that in there to start attaching it all the way around. So you will just have this huge pillow, but you'll have to make sure you don't sew those pieces together. And, and for me, it's not hard. I just make for sure that I can feel it, but this is what you're actually attaching to. So that is your front pocket and it's not being attached at all. And so this is all going to be this big fluffy pillow in here and this is where you're going to leave the opening. This is the only place we're leaving the opening in this bag. So I really like the way it all comes together but this last stitch is a little it's a little bit of a of a bulky sew and also these zipper pulls oh my gosh they are so hard because when I was sewing I kept having to make sure they weren't flopping in the seam allowance, so make sure you keep your hardware out, which the zipper pulls the only hardware I have at this moment. But just keep doing that to make sure you don't have any problems. But again, you're just going to pull and get those last raw edges attached. This is the spot where you have to remember, if you haven't already, the pattern designer does say that she likes to leave her opening in the lining in the first lining piece she sews on just so she doesn't forget it. I guess I'm living a little dangerously tonight because I didn't want to do that. I'm leaving mine in this one here. Probably smartest to do like her because this is the more challenging of the sews where everything's kind of smushed and all bulky together so I can see the benefits of that. I'm going to continue to clip all the way around. Then I'll sew this with the full seam allowance, leaving my opening and I'll come back and we'll turn it and we will cross our fingers This list, that this looks as cute as I think it's going to look. I am not even going to pretend that I'm not scared to turn this. Not because the pattern's not good, just because I really want it to turn out. I really, really like this pattern and I want it to look so good. So I left my opening it's going to take me a little while to turn it because you can see I left my opening really small. I may have to make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to try keeping it small, but if I have to make it bigger, I will. Fingers crossed that this turns out as good as my other one did and that I didn't make any mistakes. It is such a tall bag. I can't even get it on camera all the way, but... It looks so good. Now, I did not use any fleece. I did not use any Decaville light, anything like that. I definitely think I could have in the pattern calls for it. I just didn't want to this time. 
But still yet, I'm okay with that. I can see that it would have helped, especially right here on the top. So even if you don't want to use Decaville or fleece everywhere, definitely this top would be good. Now I'm going to be able to fix that because when we go off camera, I'm going to put clips in here and clip everything up and that'll help that fabric to lay the way I want it to because you can see they're just with a little bit of structuring and it looks really good. So I'm completely fine with that. Love, love, love it, but I'm going to clip everything. I am super pleased with how everything turned out. I'll take the time to iron, clip, all that. I also need to close up my pocket. The last thing that we're going to do on camera, and I'm going to put these, <laughs> these loud zippers inside so they're not clanking around while I'm trying to do this back strap piece. This will be probably the trickiest spot for me. I get so confused when adding this, this type of hardware. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is I need to attach this webbing to this adjustable bar. So I'm just gonna feed it up and through. Pull it down the bottom. So we got that there. So after I have it attached to that adjustable bar, I'm gonna take this piece and I'm gonna make sure that I have it the right way so it doesn't get twisted and I'll feed it through that top slot, back through that bottom, and then I'm going to take it and feed the raw edge back up through this adjustable bar. Back down, and then I'm going to fold the raw edge under, and I will clip it in place to the underside of that webbing. That will still allow me to be able to adjust this bar without that being loose and flowing, like having a loose end there. So I can still do that and adjust it. So whenever I pull it down, that will just slide down. Okay, so let's get that in place. And then for this bottom piece, I will take the other piece here, I'm just going to take this one and fold it under and attach it here. Now this is one way to do it. This is the way I do my other one. In the pattern, I'm pretty sure she has you do it the opposite way, but this is the way I'm going to do mine. Last things I'll need to do are sew those straps and to also sew the inside pocket. I will do that off camera. But for now, let's just talk about what an awesome pattern this is. I love it so much. I like to keep mine a little bit floppy. I think they're easier to travel with. They're easier to wash if you decide to wash it and everything. But I love the pattern. I think it turned out great. Another one. This is really becoming one of my favorite patterns. I can imagine these are going to sell really good at craft shows because they are just so convenient to use. The pattern is from So Empty Handed. This is the Super Gaming Sling. Of course, I'll leave the link in the description. The fabrics are from K&A Custom Fabrics and Hardware. I will leave their link as well. Zipper tape is from So Majestic. Tags are from Heartwood and Hyde. And I don't know where I got the zipper pulls. I've had them a long time. So this is the way it looks. If you guys have any questions, concerns, anything, or if you have a pattern that you would like for me to sew, let me know. And I hope you guys have a great day sewing something that may be a little challenging, but has a great result in the end. Thank you so much and have a great day.